welcome back. In this video, we are going to focus on the runners and joggers. So if you're someone who's a little tight from your last run, or maybe you're training for a marathon, this video is for you. Go ahead and grab a couple blocks if you have them, or large books will work too, and let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start in cat-cow. So coming down onto your hands and knees here. I'm just gonna put your knees directly under your hips and your wrists directly under your shoulders. And you're just gonna let your belly sink down toward the ground, shining your heart forward. And we're not sinking into our shoulders like this. We're pressing through, nice long neck. Hips are up toward the sky. Tops of your feet are flat on the ground. And we're just gonna breathe here. Oh, hi, Chester. Just feel that this is cow. Just really feeling your belly open up and your spine just create space in between each vertebrae. And now what we're gonna do is come up into a cat. So sending your back up toward the sky, pressing through those hands, still keeping your shoulders out of your ears, and breathing, really stretching through that back, feeling a nice stretch here. Good, now coming back to neutral for a moment, and now we're just gonna let that belly sink down to the ground. Inhale, nice long inhale here. And then with your exhale, out the nose into cat. Inhale, back into cow. Exhale, cat. Tucking those hips under you. Inhale, one more time. Into cow. And exhale, into cat. Good, now coming back to neutral, tucking your toes underneath and coming back, if this feels good for you, coming back and sitting onto your heels, opening up those feet. So we all know running is pretty hard on the feet and the toes, so really opening up through the foot and the toes. If this is too much, we're not gonna be here super long, but if it's too much at any point, you can lean forward here uh, to take some pressure off your feet. Otherwise, try to breathe through it here. It's great for plantar fasciitis, toe issues, just tightness in the foot you may not even realize. Taking your hands behind you, opening up that chest, just opening that heart one more time. Just good to make sure we're taking care of our upper body as well, since that is also involved in the running. Good. And if you're not able to clasp your hands like this, you can always use a towel to hold behind you. Keeping that in mind, if, you're, if you have shoulder issues or they're tight, remember, keep that in mind. Releasing your hands, coming forward, untucking those toes. Kind of just shake about a bit. Good. Now what we're gonna do is just bring your feet underneath you. Now you might be in a little squat here. You might wanna widen your feet out a little bit. And we're actually gonna squat down. Now, if you're able to, I'm actually gonna bring my feet a little closer, I think, um, but if it feels better for you to have uh, your feet more apart, go ahead and do that. It feels better on your knees. And you may find that your heels are up like this. That's totally fine. If you're able to try to drive your heels toward the floor, maybe you're up a little further, that's fine. You can also use your blocks to help you here, okay? What we're doing is just giving our feet um, and our Achilles a little more love. Holding this is opening up the Achilles in the back of your ankle and foot area. I like to hug my knees in while I do this. If you wanna support yourself with the blocks or without, we're gonna roll forward onto the balls of your feet, just opening up those feet one more time, and then sinking your heels back toward the ground. It's fine if your heels don't go all the way down like mine do, totally fine. Let's do it a couple more times. Up on the balls of the heels, uh, balls of the feet, using those blocks if you need to, if that feels better. And you can always set them up even higher if that feels better. Up 
on the balls of the feet, pressing those heels back down. Breathing through it, one more, coming up on the balls of those feet and pressing them back down. Good. Okay, setting the blocks to the side, coming onto your bum. And what we're gonna do here is just for a moment, bring your feet up and you can kind of press, point your toes, point and flex your feet, kind of scrunching up your toes and then splaying them out, scrunch them up, splay them out. Just taking good care of those toes and feet while we're at it. Good, okay. Now, let's go ahead and what we're gonna do is just bring yourself up to standing. And what we're gonna do is bring our right leg forward to start. And you're gonna bring this back leg back into a high lunge. So, if you find that um, you're dealing with a balance issue here, just wind your feet out a little bit, okay? They can be a little wider. Popping up that back heel. All right, and you don't have to go super low. You can if you want, but the goal here is more to open up this front hip, okay? So we're not really looking for the burn unless you want it. You can go lower, um, but we're really, and maybe lower does mean you feel it more in here. That's great. Do what works for your body. So just holding this for a moment, starting to feel that left front hip open up, okay? Now we're gonna drop our right hand down to our right side, our right arm just hangs there, and then bring that left arm up and reach over, over to the right. Okay, breathing. Good, really feel it, it sh you should feel it even more, and you might feel a little bit in your side too. Really elongating, breathing through it, good. Last breath here. With that last exhale coming back to center. And now what we're gonna do is start to bring yourself down to a low lunge. Now, if this is too much, I'll show you with the blocks. If you're pretty open, just go down to the floor with your hands, but if you need the blocks, use the blocks. So this slow lunge here, and think about pressing that left hip down toward the ground. Now, if you want, and I'm gonna go ahead and do this for now, is you can lower your knee down to the, to the mat and just relax that foot on the mat, that leg. And feel that left hip open even more in the front there. Good, this is so good. Taking care of your hips can help smoother. It will lessen any pain you experience or soreness afterward. Having open hips helps with so many things. The way you walk, the way you run, how you feel when you sit for long periods, because the hips also impact the back a lot. Okay, now gently coming up, pressing off, and you can still keep those blocks with you if you want. I'll show you with blocks on this side, on the other side, I'll just do it regular. So do what works for you. Now we're gonna sit back into a half split. So I'm gonna half split. You can keep this like at a 90 degree angle. And you just want to bring these right toes up. So you should feel a nice hamstring stretch in that right leg. You can support yourself with those blocks if that feels better. Try to keep that back straight too. So you want to really think about keeping that back straight to start. And then when you're ready, if you wanna to try to bend closer to that leg, if you want a little extra, go ahead and do so. Good. It should feel really good. That right hamstring. Good. Okay, now what we're gonna do is put that right foot down. You can bend that right leg a little bit to get started. We're gonna press ourselves back up into standing, bringing that back left leg in. So it's about two, two and a half feet from your front leg, depending on how open you are. You can use the blocks if you want, just one on each side of your right foot. And then we're in pyramid. Now, if you're pretty open and you may find you don't really need the blocks, you can try that and try to go closer to your legs, similar to what we did in the half split earlier. Now we're in pyramid, open, still opening up that right hamstring. Good. 
nice deep breaths through any of these stretches. Oh, and when you're in this position, I should have mentioned this, keep your hips square as well, keeping them straight. Good, now gently bending that right leg, bring your feet up and together and roll yourself up to standing. Good, okay, let's do the other side and then we'll move down onto the floor. So front left foot is forward, coming back into that high lunge with the right leg back, right heel is up off the floor. Widen your feet if you need the balance, go ahead and do that. Right hip is now front of it. You should feel it opening up. If you're not feeling it, think about pressing, tucking your hips under, okay? So your butt's not sticking out, you're tucking your hips under and you're just, your hips are square. You're looking straight forward. And if you're not feeling it, go a little deeper. Press, really press through that back heel too. Think it's a lot to think about, but once you get the feeling, then you know what to go for next time. Good, now hanging that left leg or left arm down and reaching over to your left, opening up even more in that right front hip and that right side body, just cracking it open. Just reaching. All right, last breath here. Exhale, come back to center. Now coming down using the blocks if you need it, one hand on each side of the foot for a low lunge here. Sending that right heel back if you want or laying that knee down and tucking the toes. And just feeling that right hip open up even more. Again, using those blocks if you need to. If you don't use those blocks and you're pretty open, you can always bring your hands to the inside of that leg too. That's probably more comfortable because my knee's like in my chest. So that's something you can do as well. Make it work for you. You know your body best, so do what feels right for your body. Make sure you keep good forms to avoid injury. Good, okay. Now pressing off that left foot and straightening that left leg. And now we're gonna come back into that half split. So we're curling, or sorry, pulling those left toes up so that the left foot is flexed, left leg is straight. You can stay with a straight back like this to start. Make sure your hips are square and you're ready to go. And then melting over that leg for a nice hamstring stretch here. breathing through it. You might notice one side is tighter, more sore than the other. That's totally normal. Just think of this as preparation for your next run or jog or walk. If you walk a lot, this is also great for it. It's taking good care of your body after the fact. Last breath here. Good, all right. Now pressing that left foot back into the ground, tucking your right toes under, and then bringing that right leg up toward your left foot so that it's about two, two and a half feet away. And if you need the blocks, go ahead and grab them. Otherwise, one hand on each side of the right, uh, or I'm sorry, left foot. Yeah, something else you can also do is as be on your calf if that feels better. Um, definitely avoid the knee area though when you do that. And then melt over that front left leg for a nice final opener here in that left hamstring. Oh, hi Chester. He loves yoga. He's a yoga cat. Hips are square in this, this pose. Really breathing into any muscle that's tight or that you, you're stretching in that moment. Thinking about sending the oxygen there. Good. Okay. Gently bending that left knee, bringing that right leg forward, and then coming down to seated. Now, now we're taking it to the mat. So 
now just bringing your feet together and a nice butterfly here if this is too much or your hips are just not having it you can always tuck the blocks underneath your knees just like this and just holding it just allowing your um, hips your inner hips to really open good good and just enjoying it I don't know about you but this forces me to slow down during the day when there are 8,000 things I feel like I should be doing and this just helps bring me back to sanity <laughs> Good, okay, gently bringing your knees in, moving the blocks to the side for now, but making sure they're within reach if you need them later. Now what we're gonna do is just come onto your back. Make sure to crush my pack here. Coming onto your back. And what we're gonna do is first just hug your, hug your knees, hug your knees in toward you, just releasing that low back a bit. So the low back also, well the whole back, but I mean really the whole body. But the low back some, for some runners can be an issue. And we're gonna do a little more for that here in just a bit, but you can point your toes again if you want, crinkle up your toes, feels good. Okay, now what we're gonna do is relax pigeons. So what we're gonna do is plant your right foot down, cross with your left ankle over the right thigh, some people call this number, number four stretch, and then bring in that leg, that right leg toward your chest. Now, you can grab behind your right thigh. I like to grab in front of my right calf, but I'm pretty open in my hips, so do what works for you. Or, if you wherever you grab, whether it's under your thigh or not, you can also press that left knee a little bit away from you if you want for a little more of an outer hip stretch here. We haven't focused on that yet, so I wanna make sure that not only the inner thighs are getting opened up, but also the outer. You should feel a nice stretch here. If you're not really feeling it, adjust a little bit. Maybe bring that foot a little further down on the thigh. Pull in your knee a little closer. Just make sure you should really feel a nice opening here in the outer hip region, okay? Also, so good for getting your hips, your bum, even your hamstrings a bit ready for your next run or jog or walk. Good. Last breath here. Gently release it. Plant your left foot down. Cross with your right foot over now. And let's pull in that left leg now, either under the thigh or um, over the calf. I just feel a nice opening in that right hip now. Nice. Just feel it opening up. Just feel really good. Keeping both shoulders down on the ground while you do this. Make sure they're not pulled up or you're not tensing up. Well, sometimes I tense up and I don't even realize it. Last breath here. Go ahead, gently release it. Back down, both feet down on the floor. Now bringing up both feet into a nice happy baby here. Just grabbing the outside of your feet and opening up your hips. If this is too much, you can always grab a towel or a strap, put it around both feet and hold that strap down. Or you can grab your calf behind your knees, your ankles if the feet just are not an option today. Opening up those hips one last time. You can do a little rock here if you want. I can't totally because my microphone pack is in the way, but do what feels good for you. <sighs> Breathing into it, letting those the tops of those thighs just sink toward the ground. Let gravity do the work. And if it just starts to feel icky or like, gosh, I'm just not comfortable, try to breathe through it, try to relax into it. It's one of the keys to really um, opening up the parts of your body that are closed. And that might sound strange, but it's true. A lot of us are really tight, 
or closed off in certain areas. For me, um, sometimes it's my back. Um, so I, every night I do things to try to open up my back a bit. So for a lot of people, it's their hips. So this is a great one for that. And it's kind of a vulnerable uh, pose too. So that can be a little intimidating for some people at first. Okay, last breath here. Gently release the legs, hug them in just for a moment. Good, now let's come roll up. And we're gonna do our last thing here where we're gonna bring our bum up, get up next to a wall um, or something that's high as high as your legs are long. Coming up with your bum against the trim like I'm doing here. Easier said than done, come down onto your back and just scoot your bum forward till it's right against whatever your vertical object is. If, you know, probably a wall. So bringing those legs up and all we're doing is letting the circulation reverse a little bit, okay? So this is really, really good at night, actually, before you go to bed, it can help you sleep better. Now, ladies, if you're on your cycle right now, um, I recommend uh, not doing this. If you are on your cycle, you can do this, just bend your knees um, so that, that you're at a 90 degree angle against the wall and you're, so you're out a little further from the wall. Everyone else, just hold your legs up. Letting circulation come this way, we're gonna flush the circulation back through the body because um, when you're running, as we know, gravity does the work and there's, you know, some impact involved and, you know, the blood is just going through its regular circulation. So this is really good to help refresh it. So I'll just spend a few more seconds here just feeling, start to feel like you're probably starting to feel the blood drain from your feet and um, getting it from your extremities so that when we come out of it, there's going to be a nice new flush of blood through your low body. And you can still breathe nice and deep. I definitely recommend breathing really deep through everything. Most of us don't breathe fully during the day. Now when you're running, I would hope you do. <laughs> It's also just so good for our bodies and our muscles to get all the oxygen we need there. All right. Now, gently pressing ourselves away from the wall or just falling over to the side like I'm doing. Pressing yourself up into seated and coming to face you. And hands to heart center. Let's inhale up. Look up at your hands and exhale back to heart center. Good. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you feel amazing and ready for your next run or jog. Uh, be sure to hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified whenever I post a new video. I will see you guys next time.